All right, hey guys, we are back, and today we're going to do a nitpick video on the Gladiator. We just got done doing a full review on the uh, 2024 Jeep Gladiator, and as you know, I'm starting to do some of these nitpick things, so we're going to dive in and get pretty uh, nitpicky on these and really dive into some stuff and try real hard to break down anything that would be a negative or a bummer that's going to bum you out. I will link the original video of the review here for you. It's also probably real recent on my channel, but I will have that there for you. Don't forget, I post videos every single day, and we're going to dive into this thing i got 35 i think 35 screenshots from this video that we are going to cover and take a look at and see what we can find uh as we try hard as we can to rip this thing apart for any negative stuff so uh with that said let's uh just pause this video and we're going to dive into the screenshots and uh here it is right off the bat this is a rubicon this is an x model 2024 uh, that we reviewed sticker price $68,000 but don't forget that with all Jeeps Gladiators uh, the discounts are huge okay <clears throat> even right now we're in barely halfway through 2024 and these things haven't been out that long and you can still you can get 15 grand off on these things all day long so the sticker price is high but don't let that fool you. You can still get some pretty good prices. So uh, we start to dive in here. Let's go. Uh, let's dive on to the screenshots here that are going to matter for us. But there it is. Um, first one right off the bat. Uh, this one does come with the steel bumper. The steel bumper is a fantastic thing. I do believe, though, even if you get the steel bumper, you still have to buy a winch plate that goes inside of there. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's it's a almost winch ready bumper but you got to actually get the actual winch plate that's going to sit inside of here would have been nice if they came with them uh, pretty much most 99 percent of the winches today are going to use the same mounting pattern so you could have put a very easy uh like a worn setup winch plate or something inside there to mount your winch on i do not believe it comes with it that would have been nice um and also notice that we do not have that cover on here that is covering up uh where the bottom of the uh, cooler is and you also got the uh uh, sway bar disconnect linkage and everything down here would have been nice the other models have this if you don't have this bumper it's got an extra little plastic guard up here uh that is missing uh admit you don't get it with the steel bumper not sure why uh but you're not getting that option moving on to the next one here uh right here you will notice in here you're going to see it i'll show you a couple different spots specs of it here but uh again i am a stickler for things lining up and being spot on perfect and we have one you can see this little weird gap right here between the hood and this valence you will see this again i will bring it up again but uh hang on can i move that over yeah right here but right here this little gap change right here kind of annoys me and again we are being super nitpicky okay i'm not gonna lie it's very hard to find things that aren't spot on on this this thing this thing is pure gold I'm, I'm sorry and i don't mean that like as a, a biased thing because i own one if you when i'm done with this video if you think i missed something or i mean i'm showing you a lot of screenshots if you think in any way at the end of this that i was somehow biased and left things out on purpose call me out on it because i don't think i did i mean this thing is pretty pretty awesome i think i did a pretty good job covering it here so um but so moving on from there um this is the underside of here underneath. Now, uh, we do have a solid front axle right here. We got all of our uh, tie rods and everything right here and track bars and all of our uh, stuff here. Um, they do have this really good steel bash plate here in the front that you can see right up here. That's a very nice thing. It's going to cover a lot of that. Um, there is no front skid plate, but there's really not a way to put a front skid plate in. That engine is tucked so far up in there, I don't think it matters. And you do have a skid plate over the cross member that's, uh, you know, in a, a Y pipe back here but um a lot of people would look at this and wish there was a front skid plate on it i don't really know how you could i'm sure aftermarket does and they can add something else on here and if there is an option <coughs> to put a better skid plate on here would have been nice if they did especially on this rubicon x model which is designed for uh sliding over rocks and everything like that they already did a really good job underneath here and these cross members are there in perfect setup and things like that but if there was a way to put more skid plates on it i think they should have done it from the factory on this model <coughs> excuse me all right next slide show or next screenshot we got on here um this is a pet peeve for me especially because i'm in the mud all the time this grill is exhausting to clean out okay all these little honeycomb things and then the little side honeycombs they are brutal mine are dirty all the time i don't care how many paint brushes you use or detail brushes or what you do trying to clean the dirt out of these things then the, the mud stains okay you'll get most of the big chunks out but the mud staining uh little mud specks all over in here are brutal hard to clean it is exhausting to clean this grill there's no no doubt about it um 
but it is what it is. I mean, it's been that way forever, but it is very hard to clean that. Uh, going on from there, uh, the tire thing is kind of an, uh, of a bummer here. Okay, we got, this is a Rubicon model, 2024. Um, there's no, and we got the gearing, we got the capabilities. There's no reason for this thing to be coming with 33-inch tires anymore. It should be coming with 35, 11, 50s like I put on mine. Stock, they fit, they don't rub, they don't cause any issues, they work fantastic. They're not much more weight in there. There's no reason for this type vehicle to come with those, especially when we have the Bison and the AEV edition uh they have the wrangler uh with the uh um uh with the extreme recon package which has got has the 35s <coughs> would be nice if they offered that package on this actual model on the gladiator there's no reason not to kind of a bummer um i wonder if maybe the reason they don't is so they can get in and out of it easier because it is a pretty tall vehicle when it comes to that kind of stuff with the way it sits but i'm not sure but i think it should have came with bigger tires right off the bat there should have been 35s on this in today's world okay a couple years ago that's fine but with the bison and uh having 35s aev edition having 35s and this thing's so easy to put 35s on without changing anything there's no reason not to. Uh, that's what I'm covering here. What, is there anything I missed in there that I was... Oh, here was that hood gap again here too. See this? See this little change right here? That catches my eye, especially on this white one, very seriously. <coughs> it's not going to you know, change my mind on anything. But again, we are nitpicking. We are ripping it apart on any possible way we can. And this little drop gap change right here is one of those kind of deals. Um, Going on from here, here's where I was talking about the tires. Could be bigger. No doubt about it. Could be bigger. Uh, same thing there. Now here, also notice with this steel bumper, you got this big open hole in here. You can see it over on the left side of the screen and these wires that are popping out right here. That should have been fixed a little bit too and this should have been covered. If you notice on mine, uh, on my Gladiator, this area, which is solid plastic on mine, is covered with mud all the time. And having this open here where you can get mud shooting in inside of there, I don't know if I like that idea. And having to try and clean mud out of the inside of that bumper all the time, this should have been uh, completely covered on there. Um, moving on to here, uh, everything here looks good, but notice that we do get a little rust. Not that it's a big deal, but uh, they coated the entire sway bar, but they left the end link open. Again, we are going to nitpick. That is this video, nitpicking. Okay, nitpicking. And uh, well, that would be, I guess you could call that a nitpick right there if you want to. Moving on from there, underneath here, there's really not much I can complain about. Everything is tucked up nice. You got this cr uh, front bolt-on cross member, and I like how these cross members here are bolt-on removable. Okay, you can unscrew them. If you were to damage this, you can just pop it up, buy a new one, pop it off. They got skid plates across the tank, sp skid plates across the uh, transfer case here. They got skid plates covering uh, the crossover pipe. They got everything here is done well. You got a cross member up here and this one, and I do love how they are removable um, or replaceable very easy. That's a beautiful kind of thing on there. Um, not sure why these cab access holes here are open, uh, but I'm glad they are because it does let water and mud drain out of there now it'll let mud in there too but it does let stuff drain out so i can see why they did that um moving on from here here's that gap again again i grabbed some different screenshots but that's what we're talking about right there kind of a little bit of an annoying thing and you notice it pretty hardcore on this white where all these lines are jumping out at you um on mine i never noticed it on mine it's gray never noticed it but i noticed it here and again we are being very very nitpicky. I am going to rip it apart any possible way I can. And that's one thing that I call there. Um, here again, just an under look on the front side. Everything here is good. This is just gasket material that overflows. I'm all right with that. Um, this here is fine. It's again, I, I'm not seeing anything under here that's freaking me out or bothering me on any kind of level. I think they did a great job on this. You can see the skids here, here, here. You can see that back there where it matters. See how far tucked up the motor is so you're not going to hit anything there. Uh, so I'm real, I'm okay here. I don't see any issues there that are, are bothering me. Um, same here when we dive in a little deeper. Like I said, everything is tucked up in there nice. Uh, you can slide on the control arms real easy. Um, like I said, I'm not, not seeing anything except for this right here see this weird little flat piece right here i have no idea why this is here and what this does <clears throat> i have it on mine too and i was going to clean it i don't know what this thing is but i'm assuming this could have probably been cut off it sticks down you can see it hang down i have no idea what it's for i never looked at it to see what it's for but this thing here like i said it's just annoying you can see it from the side i don't know what this thing is but whatever it is this could have probably been solved a little bit better i'm just not sure what it is um 
Moving on from there, we got here. Uh, Motor-wise, um, I didn't really have any complaints on this, but I wanted to show you how beautiful this is. Look at where the oil filter is right there. Oil fill right here, oil filter right there, and when you go to drain it, you can crawl underneath this thing with a tons of room, get to the drain plug right here. I mean, oil changes on this thing are just the easiest thing in the world to do. I straight up love how simple it is. Um, but uh, another thing here, though, it does have a prop rod. It would be nice to have hood struts. Some people would say that if they wanted to. Again, you're talking a very expensive vehicle. Maybe put some hood struts on it. Me, personally, I don't care. Prop rod works fine for me, but that might be be a hit that some people will think of um and here we have ppf okay paint protection film on the back fenders you can see the line right here okay right where my finger is it goes here and it wraps down and it doesn't go all the way to the corner but it wraps down and then it comes back up and it goes and it covers a lot of this. This PPF should have covered all the way up here to about right to this spot. And it should have also been on the front, the back side of the front fenders. The reason I say that is mine get beat up all the way up to here, all the way up to the curve here. Uh, my Mine are getting chipped up and dinged up from rocks and from mud and it's always got mud on there. This PPF should have been more liberal and more better, you know, should have went it with a bigger patch on here. If I owned one of these with painted bumpers or painted fender flares, I would actually redo that. I would rip that old PPF off and I would put my own on there and I would redo this the right way. <clears throat> now, and on the reason I would put it on the back of the front fenders look at these tires you got mud tires on here when you are stuck and you're trying to back out these tires are throwing mud all up to the front end and it, all that mud and rocks are hitting your front fender flares on the back side mine are always covered with mud um so i would have liked to see it there too just for those situations after all it is a jeep it is a gladiator you're going to be running it backwards when you're stuck you get any situations those tires are throwing stuff it would be nice to have that ppf protection on the other fender flare on the back of the front now the body's protected pretty well because it sits in so far from everything else but that front fender needs some um here we go right here on this one um again when you're talking about a truck of this price okay even though the good deals on it you are talking about a sixty-eight thousand dollar vehicle here uh in today's world Monotube shocks work fine for me. I am completely content with these because I like to, um, shocks have to be changed out regularly. When you drive like I do 300, 250, 300 miles a week in the swamps and uh, these back roads and all that, I'm going to burn through shocks quicker than most people. So for me, I'm quite content with these. Okay, these Rubicon Reds are great shocks. But in today's competitive world, even if you weren't doing like the full Fox setup with the piggybacks and all the stuff you get on a Mojave, would have been nice to see a piggyback reservoir, little better, higher quality shock set up on this truck for the price. Um, moving on from there, uh, right here, uh, this gap right back here, it doesn't bother me because it's an actual uniform gap on both sides. <clears throat> okay, this gap is even, and I understand why they did it, so you can clear things out and get the mud out of there and that kind of stuff. My only issue is it's too big that it looks funny, but on the same note, it's too small for me to fit my hand in there to wash things. So it's big enough that I can see all the dirt like on mine. It's just always brown in here and dirt and dirty, even when you spray it. Because you, you gotta, I have to take the time to actually use a brush to get in there and hit it with a paintbrush, a narrow paintbrush to get in there and clean that. Pain in the butt. A little bigger, I could have fit my hands in there and cleaned this easier. A little smaller, I wouldn't have seen it. It would have been okay either way. But there again, we are nitpicking this thing apart with all the little details that we can find. Um, here we come into the back. Again, you can see the gas tank skids, all this stuff there too. I really don't have any complaints um, that we can say back here on the back side. we got a full-size matching spare with, it's a Falcon mud terrain as well back here too so i've you know I, I can't find any faults on here except for one um knowing that we that most people or not most but a lot of people are going to put uh 37s on this thing it's very common to see it with 37s now it comes with 30 we can put 35s on here all day long and fit the spare in here to fit a 37, you have to go with an aftermarket track bar here to get this so that it gets a little bit of a bend in there so that you can fit a 37 in here and then you can Again, $68,000 truck. A lot of people are putting 37s on there. Why wouldn't Jeep know that and save these? Save us the 350 bucks or whatever it is for this part and automatically put one with that bend in there so we have the option to put 37s on it and fit a 37 in spare without us having to spend a few hundred extra dollars and change that part out to do it. Would have been nice if they did that. Um, 
And back here, now this one, there's no complaints here, but notice how beautiful these tailgate lines are compared to a lot of other trucks out there. Perfect gaps, work like a champ. I got zero complaints there, but on a white truck especially, look at how nice that is. Um, so that's a very nice thing right there. Rear window, like in many of the trucks today, could have been a little bigger, um, but that's all trucks do that today. Now notice, you will see this again, but see how the, you have these plastic cap rails on the sides? Don't mind that, or I, I don't mind that. Notice you got the one on the tailgate, here is nice and flush to it so it all lines up good notice in the front there is one missing okay it's like that on mine too they don't put a cross plastic guard up here on the front which means that when you buy a tonneau cover you got to add extra foam there there is no reason for this another one of these to not be going across there to make this all one flush surface okay that that's kind of just mind-boggling weird um, but that's the way they do it uh, back here um we got no complaints on anything here. The tie downs are good. <clears throat> Only real complaint is that again, for $68,000, you would think there'd be some power back here. Okay, to have some sort of uh, uh, 120 volt and you know have some kind of power back here for some tailgating features, things like that would be a beautiful thing. We don't even get that option. Uh, but they do have their tow dot tie downs are low like they're supposed to be. We got bed lights, uh, every tailgate works perfect. Um, you know, I got no complaints there, but here again, you can see it. See the gap difference? across here there should be a piece of plastic another cap goes right across this so that tonneau covers and everything fit on there flush like they are supposed to here's that other side we showed you the other side but you can see this gap again too again sticks out tremendously easy on a white you can it just jumps out at you Moving on from there, uh, the price again sixty eight thousand dollars is what this is. But remember, you will you can get these for twenty thousand dollars off. Um, so just keep that in mind. So I mean, there's a lot of pros and cons, and there's a lot of beautiful things involved in this thing. There's you're getting a lot for your money when you get the discount. Otherwise, this price is kind of steep. Uh, but something to think about. But I don't. I kind of call it a con, but not really because it is such a because uh, you can get the deals on them um, here. This one here is no sill plates, okay? These uh, door sill plates. See, I'm, me as a short guy, when I step out, I put my foot, my heel of my foot goes on here when I step out. And uh, it would I put sill plates on mine. They were not expensive, but it would be nice if a truck of this caliber came with these pla plates on here or even some PPF on here just to protect this as people are getting in and out on there regularly. Next one on here. This is a door panel where you rest your arm and uh, you'll see in the video, I actually thought this was plastic. It is not. It's actually very nice. It is a coated rubber or like a rubber coated something. It is super nice. Um, so it's not actually hit, but I mean, that is pretty impressive. But that's like right where your arm goes on there. It's it's pretty awesome. Um, these are a bummer. I'm, uh, you know, everybody hates these. This is a door panel. They put this little mesh in here. They wear out over time and stretch. You got to replace them. Um, why? They, they just need to close this off. Just find out what the distance is from here to the seat. Fill that space with a piece of plastic on here so we can actually use it. I know these are a Jeep thing. They've been around for a long time, but um, it, they just they don't work that good. I throw a lot of little stuff in there, and it's nice that crumbs don't get stuck. But you know, again. We're not talking about a $30,000 Jeep anymore. We're looking at a $70,000 Jeep or a $60,000 Jeep. We need uh, to update some of this stuff on there would be a gold mine. Um, the drain plug here. Now, underneath this and underneath the carpet, they have a drain plug in the floorboard. You can pull that drain plug out and put it in here if you want to. Why don't we just get one right here too? I don't understand that in these floor mats. See, when, I'm, when mine, mine are covered in mud all the time. When I take my floor mat out, there's always this little speck filled full of dirt that's an inch high. It filled all the way to the top of this. It's filled with dirt. When I pull the mat out, I still got these two mounds of dirt there that I got to clean out. Now, I could pull the plug from underneath there, on, under the carpet and underneath the uh, thing and put it in here. I shouldn't have to do that. Just put the plug in here. It can't cost you guys a penny. Put the plug in the floor mat too. So we got both. Leave the one in the metal in the frame and uh, you know the cab, but put another one here. There's no reason for this to be open hold like that. There's just no reason whatsoever. Um, and here's again for that door sill. You know there should be a sill plate or PPF across here to make it easy, so that you know when you're stepping on this, you're not going to scratch the paint. My paint is actually scratched up pretty good, even with the sill guards right on the edge of that. Again, from my foot sliding off there, being covered in mud all the time. Um, back here, this is the back of the seats that fold down. They fold down flat. It would have been nice to have some plastic guards on here. Again, we are talking 
$68,000 truck. Give us that option of a nice, because the seat, both seats lay down flat, and if we want to be sliding gear in and out of here, give us a nice hard shell plastic uh, setup on here that we can put stuff on. We already have the, we can use these latches for tethers. We got options there, but give us a plastic cover on that would be a beautiful feature. Um, here in the front, I, there's really not much to complain about except for the fact that a, a brake controller would be nice. Granted, I know you can only tow 6,000 pounds with the Gladiator or the Mojave version of this, uh, 5,000 for the manual, or 7,000. You can tow 7,000 pounds with a Gladiator Mojave automatic. We should have a brake controller in it. Again, this is the X model. This is as loaded as it gets. There should be a brake controller in this thing for us automatically. Also, um... While we're at it, we have the front and we have rear and front lockers, which is amazing. You have the off road plus button. Currently, still, we got to go into off road plus and then we have to hit traction control and hold it till it turns off to be able to use our rear locker in four low or four high. Okay, in four high. Ford today has got it covered with the lockers, and you can use your rear locker in four high. You can use your rear locker in two high. Jeep, get on the bandwagon with this. We there's no reason for us to have to go through off road plus and press and hold the traction control off button all the way till ESC is off to be able to use our rear locker. I understand why you want the front locker locked out. Um, my Taser Mini lets me use my front and my rears in four high just by flicking a switch, but give us the rear locker in four high at a minimum, okay, without any issue. That should be automatic, um, not go through the off-road plus and all that crap we gotta do. Uh, this one over here, the window button, the power window button, it only goes down. It does not go up. It should be double way. So when you like when you press it, like you you got a one tap option and a window will come down for you. You can just tap it and take your finger off the button, it'll go down, but you have to hold it to bring the button up or to bring the window up. It should be doing the same thing both ways. Make it double way. So I don't have to sit there and hold the button to bring the windows up. We're in a Jeep. We want to open air experience. If I take the freedom panels off and I drop down all four windows in this thing and I'm running it. When I'm done and I come back and I get in the driveway, I have to sit there and hold all four. I can't hold four at a time. I got to do the whole front two and hold them till the windows are up. Then I got to grab the back two and hold them till the windows are up. Should be automatic where I can just go boom with both of the front, boom with both of the back, and it's done. Uh, again, we are going to nitpick. We are nitpicking, okay? And there's not a lot to pick on this thing, as you can see. Um, the uh, Another one, 17.75 inch wheels, okay? Again, Seven and a half inch wide rim has a max of an 11 and a half inch wide tire for the most part. Some will let you go, uh, some 1250s might let you fit on a seven and a half, but pretty much 11 and a half is about as wide as you're going to get on a seven and a half inch rim. Why wouldn't they give us a 17 by eight so that people want to, that want to run like a uh, 35 by 1250 won't have any trouble doing that? Um, or a 37 uh, 1250, they won't have any trouble doing that. That seven and a half inch wide rim should be an eight okay now i don't mind it but it's you know because i'm not i'm running 35 11 50s they fit perfectly but i'm saying for a lot of people that kind of is a bummer right there that would be nice if they did that better uh made it half inch wider and also the payload on this thing sucks 990 but remember this is as absolute loaded as you can get a gladiator fully loaded with a super soft compliance suspension made for crawling made for doing everything but 990 pounds is definitely kind of light on there um and i know people are gonna be like well you can't that's horrible and, and I get it. It's not great, but it, it is what it is on, on, a, on a vehicle like this. Um, next one we got on here is the N1. And am I at the end? We are at the end. So that covers our nitpick session for this. And as you can see, I had to really fight hard. I had to fight hard. This vehicle is phenomenal. It is so phenomenal and so well done. And the fit and finish and quality on it is incredible. This was very, very hard. I mean, it took me a long time to try to put something together on this. So uh, what hats off to you, Jeep. You did a fantastic job on it. But if we had to nitpick, this is the best way I can come up with. You think I missed something, add it down below. Give me your comments. Let me know what you think of it. Thanks for watching.